All right. Welcome to the Records Week 7 Football Preview. We apologize for being off last week. We had some technical issues. But anyway, we'll jump right into this week and get started with the first game, which is Menendez at Atlantic. The Falcons are coming off a very tough loss to Creekside. They really hurt their playoff hopes. I think this week, which is not a district game, is more about just bouncing back and trying to put some of that bad taste behind them. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been hard to kind of figure out this Menendez team this year. When I saw them in the summer, I, you can tell they have a lot of talent. They have, and you know, it's like they, they have a good game against Sparkle Trail, but they don't really seem how to carry that <laughs> against Creekside. You know, we'll, uh, for the sake of the Falcons, we'll jump over that game. But, you know, Atlantic is another one of these teams that, you know, hypothetically they should be, but they have to go out there and play the game. So. Yeah, I mean, Menendez, I really thought going in, I picked them to win. Um, yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised either way, but I was more surprised that they lost the way they did than I would have been if, you know, it had been pretty much any other result. So, I mean, it was kind of stunning, and I think it was from Menendez, too. So, I think they're better than they were last week, and hopefully they show that moving forward. So, our next game is Englewood at St. Augustine. Another 4-6A Duval team coming to St. John's County. Hopefully, we'll be leaving by the third quarter. This is a team that's won four games in four years and has just been notoriously one of the worst teams in all of North Florida. Bartram beat them by 45 points, and St. Augustine, I think, this is about staying healthy and getting ready for Bartram next week and probably being finished by the second quarter. Yeah, I had the uh, the misfortune of actually seeing the Inglewood bartram Trail game, and not only did their fans not travel well, because I guess they knew what was coming when they played a uh, St. John's kind of game. They have uh, fans, I guess. So. Well, apparently they don't, <laughs> because they had about seven people in the uh, in their section. But I can only imagine what's going to happen. I don't think they could score less points than they scored against Bartram Trail. And they scored zero, so. So, no. but it, it, if they could, it, they would score less points against St. Augustine. That's the, the, difference, the difference in defenses that both teams have. Uh, yeah, I will, against the starters, I will be surprised if they crack 30 yards total. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think I they make fair. it past midfield, at least in the first three quarters. We'll see what happens in the backups, but who knows. Either way, it's not really a game you want to watch unless you're a St. Augustine fan. Yeah, I think Mr. Uh, Lockwood, LaChad Lockwood, the yeah. backup running back, should. I think, I'm going to say he will get over 100 yards rushing in, in the game. Uh, in four uh, possessions. <laughs> yeah, four or four times. And the same kind of game is uh, Bartram Trail at Stan. Unfortunately for the Bears, they have to travel to Stan, which just looks like it's in the middle of a war zone. But at the same time, it should be a pretty easy game for them. Stan's coming off a uh, loss to Lee, which is a uh, team that Bartram handled pretty easily a couple weeks ago. So Stan, you know, was able to score 13 points against St. Augustine very early. It was more of a fluke than anything else because then they gave up 52. So I think this is also going to be a game for Bartram and just... Make sure they get their stuff straight before they face St. Augustine. Yeah, we'll see how uh, how Coach Sutherland's quest for excellence or uh, whatever he wants likes to tell me after every game. Semper Virtus. Semper Virtus. How that goes against uh, Stan. Again, it's, you know, I don't know how these coaches keep their teams motivated when they're playing opponents like these week after week. I guess it's just, you know, you got to say district opponent to district opponent. And, mm-hmm. Hopefully they stick to that, but again, same thing as uh, same thing as the St. Augustine Englewood game shouldn't be much of a contest, and uh, you know, hopefully everyone gets to go home healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So Ponte Vedra Episcopal is the next game, which is I think could be just as bad as the uh, previous games that we mentioned. The Episcopal is a team that Creekside scored 48 against, and you know Ponte Vedra being four and one with Cole Mazza running the ball, I think they'll be able to score as many points as they really feel like. Yeah, I was, um, I was, I was just thinking that if you know if Creekside was able to write you know everything that was ailing them against Episcopal, when you think of uh, you know okay, okay Ponte Vedra doesn't have the threat at quarterback that uh, Creekside has with Adam Sandin, but just Cole Mazza and their offensive line going up against an, an Episcopal team that I, when I watched them play for Creekside they only had about 20, 20 some players and they weren't that big and. Cole Mazza is very big, so I, I just don't see. I, I'm gonna go out. And, I don't think I'm going out on that far of a limb by saying that. I think this is gonna be the widest margin of victory out of any game this week. Yeah. I just I don't see how it's less than 45 points. Yeah, Cole Mazza is actually um, heavier than any player on Creekside's defense, yes. which 
Which will show you what, uh, I mean, I guess against Episcopal, he might be bigger than any player on the entire team, including yeah. offensive linemen. So. And, and when Libby Hoxa ran against him, you know, Libby Hoxa is a tough runner, and you know, give him his credit, but he also weighs probably about 170, 180 pounds, and Cole Mazza has about 50 pounds on him, so. Yeah, it'll be a rough day for yeah, them. Um, I don't rough. expect, he'll probably get 30 carries in the first three quarters and then call it a day. 700 yards. <laughs> In our next game, what I think will be another blowout, will be St. Joseph heading to McClay, which is in Tallahassee. Tough drive, tough game. McClay is one of the better, smaller schools, and all those teams from Tallahassee are usually very, very good, very physical, very fast. And Flash is right now coming off a you know, very rough loss. I think this will be another one for them to uh, stomach. Yeah, um, Tallahassee, my least favorite city in Florida, behind only Panama City, which is uh, just two awful places. Florida, but yeah, at least the ride isn't to Panama City. I don't know. I don't know how to spin this for St. Joe. It's going to be a rough game for them. Uh, it's probably going to be another loss for them. It's going to be another loss for them. So yeah, I mean, what can you do? <laughs> at least they have the FSB to look forward to later. This yeah, season. It's, it's a tough district, tough schedule. You know, right now, it just it was last year, and yeah. it's going to be this year too, with even less players and a change in system. So then our final game is Nice Pine Ridge. This is a game that Nice lost last season and coming off a you know, very, very bad loss to Palaka. They probably do would like to win this game, similar to Menendez, just to kind of get back on track. And looking at Pine Ridge this year, they seem to be a little down. And probably a good opportunity for Nice to at least score some points and you know, move forward from, from that uh, loss to Palaka. Yeah, as bad as um, as bad as Seaman Englewood has been this season, Pine Ridge has been equally bad. I think I believe they've been shut out. Uh, I want to get this right. They've been shut out at least three times, and they've only scored a touchdown one other time. They scored 33 points on the season. They have some, I think their average margin of defeat is about 41.2 points per game. So uh, if Nice can, you know, get some of that mojo they had working earlier in the season where they did play some teams tough and they did, you know, manage to, you know, be respectable in a few cases, I think they can get a win against Pine Ridge. I, I will say... <laughs> It might not be the best matchup as far as talent goes this week, but I, I do think that this will be the uh, the closest margin of the week, which is, you know, considering the game schedule is saying a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not a very exciting week, but the only thing we can say is Lisa uh, Bartram plays St. Augustine next week, so it should be exciting moving forward, if anything. So thanks again for tuning in. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook as we update all the games from tonight.